Canadian 100% rye whiskey from Downriver batch number one and number three from New Brunswick. Sons of Vancouver batch number three from Vancouver. And Lot 40 18 year old cask strength from Windsor, Ontario. What are these like and should you be chasing these? Stay tuned for the whiskey whistle. Hey everybody, Mark Kaufman here for Whiskey Whistle on YouTube, sharing a little whiskey awesomeness from Winnipeg, Winterpeg, the center of North America, bringing you a very interesting three up, wait a minute, no, a four up, and a bonus, five whiskeys are going to be coming at you in this review. We've got 100% Canadian rye whiskeys, 100% rye, 100% Canadian, 100% rye whiskeys. From coast to coast, literally coast to coast, that is pretty cool. From the New Brunswick distillery called Moonshine Creek, they just released their first batch late last year, early this year, that was batch one, which this is, and actually it's from the distillery. I apologize for not getting this out, this review out until now. But anyway, so down river, 100% rye, from the fine people at Moonshine Creek Distillery. Right there, check out that logo. And I've also got their batch three, thanks to this, that, that's their current batch, pardon me. Batch number three from my very good friend and patron. He is a Whiskey Whistle crew member, Graham. Moonshine Creek Downriver Rye, batch number three, right there. And then the bonus that we'll have is their quote unquote bourbon style whiskey. This is a corn and barley mash, 48%, and it's batch number one. So we'll try that at the end of the show. Then we go all the way over to the West Coast to Vancouver and the Sons of Vancouver Distillery. And I have to say thank you as well to Sons of Vancouver Distillery and to my good friend Jenna. Uh, thank you very much. That's batch number three from them. I really do appreciate that. I would not have been able to grab that myself without their help. So that's great. Batch number three, cask strength at 53.5%. And by the way, the Moonshine Creek Downriver Rye is 47%. Yes, it is. And then, of course, we're saving, well, we're saving the most exciting, perhaps the most sought after, probably one of Canada's Biggest new brand, new, it's not really new, but biggest new brands, Lot 40. Um, Lot 40 invariably is a very sought after, sought after product worldwide. And this is their first single cask, single barrel, and it's 18 years old. It's also cask strength at 56.1% ABV. I did buy this myself. I won the ability to purchase it in a lottery that was limited to Ontario residents only. <laughs> but I had my friend Fred. Hi, Fred. I had my friend Fred hang on to that bottle for me until he came this summer to spend his 40th birthday with my wife and I and his wife and his kids. We had a blast. Whew. All right. Uh, anyway, so we're all the way here in October 2022. It's snowing in Winterpeg, so we're officially in Winterpeg season. But anyway, you might be wondering why it's been two months since I've put out a bespoke um, whiskey review, a, a standalone whiskey review, not a live stream. I did have a live stream, I think that was last week. And it was three hours, it was lots of fun. Uh, please do check that out. Um, it's uh, There's going to be a link in the description of this video uh, so you can check that out. Uh, anyway, so a big assortment of things, work, life, uh, stress, etc. And I just could not get here in front of the camera. Um, in fact, I have a couple of interesting reviews pre-recorded. I'll get those out in the coming weeks as well. So you'll see a different hairstyle pop up suddenly and yeah I know it's getting long and crazy I'm gonna let it grow a little bit because I don't think I have much time left to to do this in fact I can already see there's there's like spots you can see there anyway all right well let's get these poured I'm so glad you're here 
if you've got some rye whiskey, if you've got downriver rye, if you've got the Sons of Vancouver, if you've got Lot 40, even if it's the standard bottling, why not pour along and follow along with me? All right. So Downriver Rye over in um, in New Brunswick. This is in Waterville, New Brunswick. I think it's fairly close to Fredericton. And uh, my buddy Graham is an early supporter of this distillery. Um, I think they're doing amazing things. Interesting name, Moonshine Creek. I'm sure there's some historical reference there. Um, named after Downriver Risky. No, no, no. Well, it doesn't say it doesn't have the story of uh, Moonshine Creek, the name, but um, you know, there was lots of moonshining going on in Canada and in USA, pretty much until probably like about 70, 70 odd years ago. Um, laws have made it very strict, uh, so you can't really do that. I uh, winked there for a second. But anyway, so that is the Downriver Rye Whiskey from Moonshine Creek. Let's pour the Sons of Vancouver. This release number three is called Palm Trees and a Tropical Breeze. And after I reviewed this, I am going to do this little pairing that um, the Sons of Vancouver Distillery set me up with. That was a big, he hefty pour. Oh, my. And that is some interesting dried pineapple that uh, the distillery feels really works well together with this whiskey so we'll try that and uh, then finally let's pour the lot 40 18 year old very lucky that i tried that i uh, that i got this bottle again that was a purchase with uh, the help of my patreon patrons thank you very much Check out me out. Check me out. Pardon me on Patch Patreon. There we go. Patreon.com forward slash whiskey whistle. Join the whiskey whistle crew. I'm also on buymeacoffee.com, but it seems to be a rather unused platform. Anyway, if you become a patron, if you become a crew member, you'll get your name in the credits of each video whilst you're a patron. I think I'll have to do a patron alumni reel as well. Uh, you also get advanced viewing of future whiskey videos like this one and glasses, merch, all these things are coming. And I know a few of you, I do owe you glasses, etc. Okay, another big, huge pour. I think that was the biggest pour. Um, big, big color. <laughs> Didn't break anything. Big color difference here from um, the uh, East Coast to the west coast, to the middle of Canada. Well, actually, I'm in the middle of Canada. This is in the east. This is east. It's in the eastern time zone. Come on. It's not the center of Canada. Get out of here. But uh, anyway, I digress. Um, let's have a quick look at color. And I'm going to skip the legs um, for this video, mainly because I can see it well. I know that you can't. And I feel that that's not a worthwhile um, bit of time on this video since you really can't experience it. But look at the color difference between these three. You've got a nice uh, burnished gold for the Moonshine Creek, light copper for the Sons of Vancouver, and then um, a brighter, deeper, brassy copper over with, uh, with the uh, Lot 40 18-year-old. And ages for the Moonshine Creek and uh, the Sons of Vancouver, you know, three, four, five years old in that range. As batches increase, the age, the average age increases as well. Um, I think rye whiskey works very well at a young age, kind of like peated whiskey. So if you notice that younger peat whiskey is feistier and more peaty. Well, I feel like younger rye whiskey also is uh, feistier and more more spicy, more um, more rye spice, minty, uh, all of those good rye flavors. But let's jump into the review. We'll check out the Downriver first, probably the one you're least familiar with. Beautiful. 
beautiful, bright, fruity rye spice. It's interesting. It doesn't have the um, the American straight rye whiskey has a particular smokiness, earthiness. I don't want to call it dirty, but I feel like dirty rye, dirty meaning it's just it's it's chewier and meatier. Um, this one, however, is a brighter, um, refreshing, still very spicy, but fruity style of rye. And you can smell that there is some virgin oak going on in there. Um, aged, yes, here we go. Aged in virgin oak barrels at our distillery in the heart of the St. John's River, St. John River Valley. All right, so probably basically three years and change uh, for this one. I'm guessing that the uh, release number three is going to be a little bit older, but we'll check that out. The virgin oak, the um, charred cask is a bit lighter. It's still there, but it's it's not quite like uh, the bourbon charred oakiness that you get. And for fruits, I've got some crisp green apples, some savory mint, maybe more like, oh, I don't know, a nice mix of basil, cilantro, and mint. Cheers. Mmm. sweet oh spicy it's really interesting it really starts out nice and sweet and that rye spice just takes over the whiskey about mid palate the finish you got fireworks right off the bat and then interestingly it's almost the reverse so sweet to spicy intense spiciness on the palate and then intense spiciness at the beginning of the beginning of the finish, which sweetens over time. Caramel, toffee. Let's try this again. Mmm. <laughs> mm. A nice amount of aging has gone on. So you've got nice oaky sweetness so some nice dark vanilla bourbon vanilla there's that little bit of um, a slight smoky charredness um, to the whiskey as well and then it's just bang 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 that uh, that rye spice just setting off little bombs in your mouth and that continues at the beginning of the finish and then like i say it sweetens, it smooths, it relaxes, and it's got a really supremely long finish. Now, last year, the Sons of Vancouver, well, this year, for 2022, the Sons of Vancouver was my rye whiskey of the year, uh, world, world rye whiskey of the year um, for Whiskey Whistle. Um, this would have been number two approximately, alongside Millstone Rye. Um, anyway, some very, some similar profiles there. Interestingly, a nice Kleinlish style waxiness in there. Some lovely, um, Citrus alongside that mintiness, some fresh lime, lime juice with the mint, the basil, the cilantro, big vanilla, toffee notes, that uh, oaky, uh, charred oaky kind of smokiness. And it's not too dry. Rye can be a lot drier than other types of whiskeys. But it's not overly dry. It's a manageable dryness. 
And I think that it's really going to do some wonderful things with water added, which we're going to check out right now. And for these Canadian whiskeys, I'm going to use some Canadian spring water. About 10 drops. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Not quite one milliliter. When you're talking drops from an eyedropper or from a pipette, if you have a pipette, you've got tiny drops. So about 15 drops to a milliliter, roughly. Okay, so we got the water added and let's give it a quick speedy swirl. Ooh, the bourbon vanilla, that oaky, charred, sweet smokiness coming out. Whoa, splash it on myself. Well, this would make actually a very nice cologne if you wanted to go out like that. <laughs> hmm. Definitely brought out some, let's say, enjoyable sweetness on the nose here. So maybe you've got a couple of sweet pears thrown in with the apple. We still have the um, cilantro, the mint, maybe a little bit of um, parsley. Savory greenness. Sweet greenness. Herbal greenness. Definitely some awesome Korean genip. Uh, the the uh, seng, uh, seng genip, not the zangati, not the fermented um, perilla leaf, but the fresh perilla leaf right out of your garden. We've got some. Beautiful, sweet spice, savory spice. Mm-hmm. More rich toffee. You know, the little cube caramels you get. And there used to be two colors. A lighter one and a darker one. I'm getting a bit of the darker um, cubed caramel. Caramel? Do you say caramel or do you say caramel? Hmm. <laughs> It does take water very nicely. And interestingly, this does not taste underaged. So if it's three years old, it's more like five or six. I don't think it's five years old. But even then, you don't have that really youthful, mm, for lack of a better word, rubbery, underaged, headsy, tailsy type of notes here whatsoever i think it's good they've got a very nice clean distillate which suits this type of rye very well and then it's got some good aging in very excellent barrels so well done moonshine creek let's give you a whiskey whistle whiskey score for moonshine creek batch number one what is that going to be folks it's going to be 89 out of 100. You heard it, 89 out of 100 is the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Down River Rye Whiskey from Moonshine Creek. Beautiful. Nice little kiss on the cheek. Mwah. Wonderful stuff. Um, we'll check out the batch number three after these ones just to keep things nicely mixed up here. Okay, so let's get on to the Sons of Vancouver batch number three. Palm trees and a tropical breeze, right? Yes, I got it. 53.5% ABV. So this has been finished in rum casks. And I think quite good rum casks, actually. Virgin Islands rum casks. And the risky, the, the risky, the rye whiskey, risky. Risky rye whiskey. Okay, the rye whiskey was aged in used American oak 
blended and transferred into X bourbon barrels, and finally rested in Virgin Islands rum casks. Now, when they say used American oak, what we should take that to mean is probably the distillery has used those barrels um, for whiskey. They've got a few different whiskey things going on. Uh, they've got lots of other things that they do, wine, fortified wine, and so on. Um, so those may have been a few times used casks. So simply we call them used casks. Uh, Scotland, in Scotland, they tend to call them refill casks. Anyway, so then to X American Oak, and then finally a nice finishing in the Virgin Islands rum casks. Okay, so the nose. Very, very soft. But it's got some really interesting candy-like... Oh, like, like swizzle sticks, like, like the candied banana, the foamy, whatever, um, what do you call it? Kind of like a marshmallow. It's not really marshmallowy though. Oh boy. Beautiful. Um, again, excellent baking vanilla. There is panna cotta um, Italian pudding. It's got a creaminess. It's got a, um, a kind of a milkiness to it. Like creamsicles, but instead of being orange flavored, it's just like, I don't know, strawberry, strawberry creamsicle. Well, that's a very dreamy nose for sure. It's very subtle. Take your time with this one. Oh, but really, really interesting. And I guess that must be the rum talking here in combination with obviously the distillate, the ex-bourbon casks. Ex-bourbon casks having kind of a marshmallowy note to them the rum casks having this this interesting fun fruitiness okay well i could smell that all day it's a beautiful beautiful nose subtle but beautiful let's check the palate out cheers hmm Now, a similar style of rye, it's a fruitier rye. Uh, I'm guessing some kind of malted rye is in there to help fuel the conversion of starch to sugars for fermentation. There could be some enzymes which are permissible in Canada um, to help promote that conversion as well. But again, a very fresh, fruity, clean rye whiskey. Hmm. Very delicious. Totally different than the downriver rye. This is very, um, very cask forward. This one is very distillate forward and previous content forward. The finish is quite dry, fruity, spicy, minty, hoppy, um, and uh, some very, very bright candy notes as well on the finish. Okay, let's add some water here. And we're going to go a little bit heavier into the water for this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 drops, roughly one milliliter added. 
<clears throat> All right, so a quick swirl. Oh, more of those beautiful candies coming through. Creamy, delicious candies. There's that milky strawberry candy that's swirled. What is it called? But something kind of like that is coming through here. It's not as herbal as a downriver rye. It's a little bit fruitier. A little bit of cask goodness coming through on the palate now with water. A little bit more vanilla forward. A nice fruity fudgy note. Fudge like the candy fudge. Still quite intense, astringent, dry finish. Let me add a little more water. Probably about 25 drops. Pretty long finish. Not quite as long as the virgin oak cask matured Moonshine Creek. But the mix of flavors that effect from the the rum casks beautiful mm -hmm. there we go sweeter fruitier um, quince that weird fruit you can't really eat because it's just too hard it's kind of like a pear looks like a pear um, it's super dry if you if you try to eat it. It's best for cooking, for making jams, but incredible smells. Yeah, much more of the bourbon coming through on the nose now. Still beautifully candied. Delicious. I wonder what full maturation in those Virgin Islands rum casks would be like. Very good. I think I need one more sip, though. Hmm. Very, very lovely. All right, so the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Sons of Vancouver, batch number three, Palm trees and a tropical breeze. What is that going to be, folks? It's going to be 87 out of 100. You heard it 87 out of 100 is the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for palm trees and a tropical breeze. Needs a nice little hug. Mmm, very good. Now, so far, that's the best nose I've smelled in a long time. And I think that. Um, I think the strength, I don't know. Could this have been released at a lower uh, lower strength? Maybe. 47%, 48% might have been beneficial in a way. You know, or uh, maybe a little bit longer aging in those um, Virgin Islands rum casks. But the big, for me, the only thing here that I'm... I'm um, you know, enjoying, but there's a but there, is that intense astringency on the finish. And you can't control that. It's a beautifully made whiskey. That's not the fault of the distillery. They didn't do something wrong. It's just that casks, or those casks, and this whiskey. And what you get is this beautiful nose. Incredibly beautiful nose. Mmm. Juicy, tropical, fruity palate. Candied. Candy shop. 
See now with water, this is actually mellowing out a little bit of that dryness. So yeah, maybe 88 is a better score for palm trees. 88 points. We'll go with 88. <laughs> yeah, seriously, try it with water, please. Mm. But keep in mind for the producers, not all of your clientele is going to be adding water. So think about that as you decide on, on proofing, whether it should be cask strength or whether it should be 50% or 49 or 48. Um, I, I think that um, the majority of people will appreciate the whiskey presented at its best possible strength. That's all I got to say about that. I'm going to move that over there. All right, so 89 points for Downriver Rye. 88 points for uh, batch number three from Sons of Vancouver. And let's check out the one you've been waiting for. Oh, I'm getting very sweaty down here. Lot 40, 18 year old. We've had a good amount of time in the glass, about half an hour. Um, think about a minute for every year in the glass, okay? Sweet. Lots of beautiful barrel notes. Dark toffees. That similar, very interesting bourbon vanilla. Hmm. Right off the bat, the age with the rye. Lots of, of library, um, old books, leather bound books. You know, the pages as the yellow has an interesting sweet aroma. Personally, I like that smell very much. There is not baseball glove leather, but um, like old classic car, luxury car uh, leather seats. Original leather seats. They've been there forever. They've weathered. They've got sun on them. Um, you've got just this interesting leathery. It's not sweet. It, it's it's a savory, weird, interesting note. Interesting smell. This tastes like, seriously, last generation, wonderful, classic Canadian whiskey, but at cask strength, which by the way, I think I didn't mention, I did mention 56.1%. The rye here, similarly, these are all very similar in the way the rye is presenting itself. Fruity, herbal, a nice clean rye. And hopefully rye lovers know what I'm talking about. The difference between that dirty style, like for example, Lot 40, batch number three, cask strength release number three, um, versus numbers one and two, like some of the straight rye whiskeys made in USA. Hmm. Bottled from a single barrel aged for 18 years. I don't think this was a virgin cask, but it might have been a very underused bourbon cask. So 
something that held whiskey for say less than two years. So it's got a little bit of the tannins pulled out, but it's still very, very active. Could it be a four-year-old barrel? It might be. You know, a lot of the standard Canadian, uh, standard bourbon whiskeys are aged for four years uh, because that is the minimum age for a straight whiskey that you don't have to declare the age. Any younger, up to two years old, you have to declare that it's two years old or three years old or 26 months or whatever. Mmm. As your palate adjusts to the to the strength, to the style. Um, fruitier, again, very apple-y. Apple skins. Not too much mint, but peppery. It's got a peppery rye. Um, like pink peppercorns. Subtle mint, very soft mint, but it's a herbal mint. Again, maybe more like a little bit of parsley mixed with a little bit of uh, basil and a tiny little bit of mint. Hmm. Sweet. Intense finish. Very much matching the downriver. Not quite as intense in the beginning, but just as fruity, toffeed, vanilla, and delicious uh, as time passes. Okay, so. Oh no. <laughs> I just lost the glass part right into the water bottle. Okay, so we'll go with an old method. This will be an exercise in control. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Maybe that was twenty one. All right, so about one and a third milliliters. Beautiful toffee. Wonderful fresh apple skins. That weird bookshelfy note coming through on the nose here with water. Mmm. Red plums. A little bit of green grape. This needs more water yet. It really does. Now, generally, the older the whiskey, the more careful you should be with water. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, whoa, okay. That was a l roughly a milliliter, maybe a little bit more. So I've got about two and a half milliliters of water added. It's not very much. Some ginger coming through. A little bit of lightly roasted fresh ground coffee. Mm-hmm. Beautiful, wonderful palette. Needed that water to really balance out this, this very astringent, dry rye whiskey. Sweet ginger, like ginger snaps. Fruity, fresh, like untreated apples. Fresh, 
organic apples. You know, rub it on your shirt, polish it up with those natural waxes, give it a whiff, get that that florally appley note, right? It's got everything um, of the downriver, some of the candiness from the palm, uh, palm, palm trees and a tropical breeze from, from, from Sons of Vancouver Distillery. Then you've got this leatheriness, the bookshelfiness, um, that intense appley note. Sweet ginger, some rose hip tea, and that's that's really quite lovely. All right, so let's get on to the whiskey whistle whiskey score for lot 40, 18 year old. What is that going to be, folks? It's going to be 90 out of 100. You heard it. 90 out of 100 is the whiskey whistle whiskey score for lot 40, 18 year old. Deserves a rye hug. And a little rye kiss on the cheek. Mm. Very good. Um, all of these are excellent, beautiful rye whiskeys. So if there's another lottery for a single barrel of Lot 40, put your name into it. But just keep in mind that the price is commensurate with the the rarity um, of that particular their whiskey. If it's a single barrel, obviously it's going to be more expensive. All right, now I want to clear these out of the way along with these bottles. And we're going to check out these two extra Downriver Whiskey releases. We've got the Moonshine Creek Downriver Whiskey. Uh, they're batch number one. And then Moonshine Creek Downriver Rye, batch number three. And I think I have, and this is a retake, so I've got to pour a little more here. There we go. And a little bit more for the Downriver Whiskey. So the Downriver Whiskey, bourbon style, it's very light. You've got something kind of like, uh, like a ream of, of fresh paper for your printer. There's a little bit of shoe polish, a little bit of leather. Mmm. Sweet, leathery, little bit of fruit, a little bit of cooked apple. And that's very good. I feel like it's gonna be excellent when it reaches six, seven, eight years old. Um, for the, one of their future batches. And then we have the Downriver Rye, batch number three. This one I think is a refill cask. I don't think it's a virgin oak cask. It's a little bit more subtle. It's more like the, um, the Sons of Vancouver, batch number three. Very fruit forward. We don't have the barrel char. Lots of fruit, however. A little bit of, I don't know, mandarin orange pith. And not as much herbal mintiness. Mmm. Super sweet, super fruity palate. Wow. Very citrusy. It's so different. That's really, really attractive. And I think that's a fun series to follow if you want to try different styles of rye whiskey. Excellent. In a way, I feel like the batch one was superior, but in another way, this is a little bit more complex. Um, so that's a really great release from them. Moonshine Creek, we had also Sons of Vancouver, 
Um, they're palm trees and a tropical breeze, batch three. Lot 40, cask strength, 18 year old, with its leathery, bookshelfy goodness, and still very fruity, very minty, rye, spicy. But interestingly, all of these are very um, beautiful, clean rye whiskeys that I think would be a very easy entry if you're used to single malt, whoops, if you're used to uh, bourbon whiskeys, I think these are gonna float your boat. So Canadian rye whiskey, get it if you can, and if you can't, make friends with a Canadian in a whiskey group, and I'm sure there's gonna be somebody coming to your country at some point, just, just trade, trade, Trade some Italian whiskey for some Canadian. Finnish whiskey for Canadian. Brazilian whiskey for Canadian. The whiskey world is amazing. The whiskey community is fantastic. So you can get these. You just have to make sure you make lots of friends in Canada, okay? <clears throat> Pardon me. All right, well, that was an effort. I had to re-review the end of this. I'm sorry about the camera angle. Maybe a slight change there. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you check me out on Patreon, Patreon, patreon.com forward slash whiskey whistle. Again, my name is Mark and I will see you for the next one. Goodbye now.